Okay, welcome back to High Fleet. Um, let's start with a sit rep because we need to discuss what is currently happening in the game and um, address some of the issues with our last play session, but how we can recover from that and make a comeback here because we're not in dire straits as of yet. Uh, our biggest thing that happened was we nuked Bokchim, which in <laughs> in retrospect was maybe not the best idea because we could just committed a significant war crime and I was maybe a little bit too lackadaisical about just launching those nukes. The plan was to wipe out the last two strike groups us do strike fleets on the map, um, Basalt and Elbrus. If we can get rid of those, we can pretty much head north with impunity. And it's a very, it's a huge victory to gain this early on in the game because it means I can just sweep north and take a whole lot of cities, make a lot of money, and, and get ready to assault Kiva with a really good fleet, not worrying about being hunted on the way. Because yes, there will still be tack groups in the area, but they will no longer be able to support these um, really heavy attacking fleets. And it just makes me operate with impunity. And, and it is a great victory to earn, so it's worth giving it my all. Unfortunately, they had left Bochum by the time the nukes had landed, uh, putting me in a tricky situation where I am now in a nuclear war with Kiva, um, and I've missed my first strike chance. Because I think, uh, at least in my opinion, the way you win a nuclear war, if you ever want, which you don't ever want to get into, and I'm really annoyed that I got into a nuclear war, is you win on first strike. If I managed to first strike these ships and take them out, then we would be in a fantastic position to continue moving north without the enemy knowing where we are. But unfortunately, we're now in a situation where we're being hunted by these two fleets, and we need to take them out quickly. So I need to get my nuclear carriers reloaded as fast as possible. I need to locate these fleets as fast as possible. I need to take them out. Now, um, in addition to that, we also have the fleet up here at Rafat. Now, I missed at the end of the last video. I couldn't work out what the missiles were that were attacking somebody because I was so obsessed with what was going on down here. It was the missiles, that the, the second Yars that we had here. Oh, let's just unclick that. I don't want these beeping going on. The Yars in this fleet here had fired at Rafat. Now, I can't remember, and I'm not going to go back and view because I'm playing this like I'm just playing it in one session, even though this is a different recording session. I can't remember if I took out the ships here. Um, as it stands, this fleet does not have enough fuel to get out of here. So I have currently ordered them to land... Um, about 7.7 hours away in the desert, and my hope is that the garrison will not chase them and find them. I'm going to land them and hope that they can hide. I'll talk about this in a second. We also have a radio signal to pick up, which we'll deal with in a second as well. Um, my hope is that I can send somebody to recover them soon, and they're going to head back to Sadie and pick up a lightning. There's a lightning for sale here to replace the, um, the Lone Badger. Well, the Lone Badger 2 will be back with us as soon as I can. Meanwhile, over here... Um, I was very confused in the last session by this. Danger close, Elint warnings. How can there be danger close, Elint warnings in Rafat if I know that both strike groups are between Boshim and Kumdag? But if we check the Fennec, which is here, and look at its radar, which is currently on, you see this fuzzy area here? And if I zoom in on the map, this fuzzy, this, this, this wedge that is currently cut out of my map, this tells me what this means, and it took me a while to work it out, but I've seen it before, Somebody on this vector, in this cone, has, um, they have, what's it called? Uh, they have radar jamming turned on. So the way radar jamming works in this game is that it makes your radar returns really noisy uh, so that you can't identify how far away your radar pickup is. So if I was to click on our fleet back here, the Elint thinks they're danger close, and that's because the Elint is detecting the radar emissions from the radar jamming device that this fleet has mounted on it. It doesn't know how far away they are, but it screams across the map the location that they're in. So this is another way that we can now track their vector, or we can track their position. Um, so my current plan, and I'm not going to do it just yet, my current plan is to get this fleet here, which has the rooster and the skylark in it, to link up with the fennec, I'm going to use the Fennec to identify their position using radar and then hopefully launch another strike against them using the Fennec to guide the missiles in like I did, tried to do in that previous video and it didn't work. Because what should happen is, like now with the FCS radar that is mounted on the Fennec turned on, this area here, this is the range of its fire control system, it should be able to um, guide the missiles in. If I've done it properly, I've done it in the past and I've read about it, that's how it should, should go. Some other stuff to, to deal with before we leave here. I'm just going to jump into um, this town here because we need to get the zero sum up and running. And I was holding back on doing this because I really wanted to mount AK-100s on it. We're not going to get them in time. It's not going to happen. So we're going to mount our four D-80s on this ship to give it 130 millimeter ammo. So we're going to put... Oops. I hope if I clicked in the right place, that would be really useful, you know? So one, two, three four and then for this last slot up here it's a little bit exposed i'm just going to put a 2a37 on here i think i have enough ammo for it i do now the big problem with this ship as we know is it can't land because i haven't put landing gear on it and that honestly irks me a lot 
Um, the other thing about the ship is it currently has absolutely no armor or protection. It's basically a giant lightning. Okay, that's what we've turned it into. But that's my playstyle. It has flares, it has palash, so it has some protection even though it's not visible. The palash coverage is top and bottom. So it's got a full circle 360 palash coverage. Um, we're slightly low on crew, but it should be fine. It's gonna take six hours to repair. It says it's gonna trust 27,000, but as we know, we had those guns, so it's fine. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna save that. That's the zero sum, default. Now, another thing to quickly address before I unpause the game is we're now in patch 1.13, which has some significant changes. One of the biggest changes is changes to how armor works. Honestly, it doesn't affect my playthrough too much. Um, armor is now a lot heavier per ton, um, and uh, the enemy, it, it's probably going to affect, affect the enemy more than me. The other change, and it's a big change, and it's a huge change, is that the enemy can now load um, different ammo like I can. But I, from what I've seen, and I haven't played too much in the new patch, they can actually load multiple ammo types. I'm pretty sure I saw in a game, um, a Varyag, and I was doing some tests against Varyags, a Varyag was using proximity fuse ammo against me, and then it switched to armor piercing uh, when it got a shot on an armor piercing section and cut straight through my ship. Um, I've also seen gladiators use proximity fuse, which is terrifying. If you can imagine um, a gladiator opening up with eight, sh eight rounds per shot, proximity fuse ammo, rapid fire, and a ship, and a lightning, it, it can just cut it out of the sky so much quicker. So that is a worry for us. That's gonna be a big concern for my playthrough is how I'm gonna deal with those ships. Um, I have some ship renaming to do as well. Somebody's requested a ship to be called the, a Black Iron. Um, a Big Iron, sorry, a Black Iron, a Big Iron. I think I'm gonna rename, because they, they're only on the ship I'm gonna rename, I'm gonna rename the Longbow to be the Big Iron. Um, because it is my bigger carrier. So it's gonna be Big Iron. Oops, not Big Iron. Big Iron. I have another ship to rename as well, but it's currently flying, so I can't rename it. So we'll do that when we get to it. Um, so we'll just save that and we'll quit out. So the other repairs that are going on here, just to remind you, are the missiles being loaded into the Sevastopol and the Great Evil King. So once they're done, I'll keep checking on them. Right now we've got one nuke loaded, um, and that's all. We've just got one nuke loaded. So we need to wait until we've got two nukes and two um, radar missiles. We'll get ready to attack. So what I want to do here is I want to order the Fennec to uh, link up with this fleet, and I want this fleet to link up with the Fennec. Now, we do really need to keep an eye on our fuel here. This is gonna be tricky fuel-wise. The other problem we've got is this fleet here is out of fuel. Um, I don't actually have another ship I can really send out to refuel them right now, which is a big problem. We're gonna to have to deal with this problem and hope they survive long enough for us to deal with them. Um, that's really all we can do. Uh, I just wanna really quickly confirm that the uh, Yars definitely doesn't have a gun. It might have a 2A37, I don't think it does. No, it uh, doesn't have a gun. Okay, that's the big problem is that fleet has no weapons and they're out of fuel, so it's a bit of a disaster. Um, in terms of planes right now, we have no planes ready to go and they're gonna be part of our strategy for identifying where this fleet is. I really wish I had IRST on this fleet because it would help me track them down as well, but we will be bringing the radar up to locate them. The last thing I want to do is I'm going to decipher this message. I'm going to go through radio, radio decryption in this episode as well. Um, so let's do this decryption. Now, the second I start doing this radio signal, the game is going to on pause, and I'm going to try not to panic. So let's go. Radio decryption. Um, so that's on the expensive band. Let's just see if we can find them. Somewhere over here by the looks of it. Okay, and then we'll get the direction. Direction's over here. Save it. Okay, now this is a very important message. Um, unfortunately, we've missed out the most important parts of the message um, with our decryption. So um, we need to meet somebody somewhere, but we don't know where we need to meet them. We do know the, uh, the direction of this message. I need a sip of tea there. But if you look on the map, it's um, roughly about mm, 330 degrees, I'd say. Somewhere around, yeah, 330 degrees. So if we just do a quick line from there, uh, 330 degrees, we just know that any city on this line we probably need to go to. So it could be En Gedi, it could be Shivran, but we'll just, oh, I used the wrong tool there. Let's just quickly erase that. That's a crazy, crazy line we just drew. I need to do it on the end. We'll just draw that again. So from here on a line of 330, oh, it didn't draw it properly because there's already a line there. What am I doing? I'm using the wrong tool again. It's like I haven't played this game in a week. 330. So somewhere along this line, actually. So it could be Kalia, it could be Engedi, it could be Nagar. We need to pay attention to that. There's somebody who wants to meet us along that line. Um, and they actually broadcast that in the clear. But the next time we get an encrypted message, I'll show you how to decrypt it. For now, let's just unpause the game and keep an eye on what's happening here. Um, the Fennec has its radi radar on, but the Sevastopol doesn't. And that's by design. And let's just also quickly check um, our missiles. The fleet is definitely in range this time. Let's not make that mistake again. Because um, I don't want to make that mistake. All right. 
So these fleets are going to link up and then we're going to try and locate them. So our main tool right now is this um, radar sweep. We're going to use this to locate, to, to work out their, their main direction that they're flying at us from. Now what I'm considering doing, let me just pause the game for a second, is sending the rooster on, um, on its own, just back to the city of the hidden people to repair and um, get some rest, because I don't want to engage this fleet in close combat. But uh, having the rooster in this fleet means I can if they've got really low health, but it's also burning up fuel. To be honest, I don't think it's it's a very light ship. It doesn't burn up that much fuel. I'm going to keep it in the fleet for now. So let's wait for these guys to link up. Um, oh, look. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The jamming's turned off. Do you see this? They've turned the jamming off. Um, so that changes a lot because now we now we don't know where they are. Let's um, do a quick sweep from the Sevastopol. Nothing on radar from the Sevastopol. The Sevastopol is picking them up at distance 2, 3, 30. So we now need to go back to old school tracking. So distance 2, 3, 30 puts them, honestly, it puts them on this line, maybe around about here. So what we want to do is get this fleet to, to buzz this area and see if we can pick them up. If we pick up something in Cumdag, we know it's them because there's no garrison in Cumdag. So let's go back to this fleet here and just wait for them to link up. Okay, and now, no, no, don't land. So they've got a decent amount of fuel. I'm going to bring them back up here. I want to keep the radar on on this ship, which leaves them open to Elint attacks, but I'd rather they get hit by uh, missiles than one of my Bane fleets. Um, how are we doing on missile reloading? We've still got only one missile loaded. I just want to check that my ships are actually loading missiles because that would be a disaster if they're not. I assumed they were at the start of the video. I should have checked. According to this, there's two KH-15s being loaded onto this, this ship. And according to this, the Sevastopol has one loaded, but it isn't loading another one. Okay, so let's get another KH-15 loaded onto the Sevastopol. Now, the problem is it looks like they're going to be doing the repairs on the Zero Sum first. Uh, looking at this, it looks like it's already got some guns mounted, but it's only six hours and it's going to take these guys a little bit of time to fly over here anyway. Um, our, sp our fuel is also in danger at the moment. Um, what can I do about that? Let me just think. Because we can we can land at Cumdag, but if the strike fleet's there, there's not we, we can't get out and we can't make it to any other city. We can keep flying basically until this blue line is hit up to the bottom of the hidden people city of the hidden people. Um, and then we need to really worry. How are we doing with planes as well? Let's just keep an eye on all of this. This is a very important strike we're about to do. Planes are still not ready. Angle on the Eland hasn't changed. So let's just keep an eye on their fuel. It's going down fast. What we should be able to do though is once we get this ring over the strike fleet, we can start taking them out. Um, and they won't know these guys are here because they've got such a, hopefully such a low profile. Okay. So now we've reached a turning point. We have to decide, do we continue to come dag or do we return to the city of the hidden people? They've turned their jammer back on. Or we're in range of the jammer. I'm not sure. No, the, the jammer is out, outranges our radar. Um, so the jammer is back on, which means they probably know we're in the area. Uh, they, I know they haven't got any missiles until they land. I think they regenerate the missiles when they've got to land, when they land and get a chance to refit them. Oh, I keep clicking on that message. Um, let's just have a quick look here. We definitely only have one nuke. So the question is, do I pull back to the city of the hidden people and refuel and then come back out and find them again? Or do I take the opportunity I've got now to missile strike them? Because what I could do is I could send the Sephestapol out to link up with this fleet and refuel it to bring it back. Now the Sephestapol is slow. Um, but that means that I, do, I can I can get them in range to buzz this area, or I could do an air stop with them as soon as they've got them in radar range. Up until now, I've definitely played uh, a play style of, of extreme aggression, where I would always send them forward. But just because of the situation over here, which by the way seems to have worked out, um, the garrison does not seem to have chased them out. Let's just actually quickly deal with this while I remember. Uh, we may be okay over here. Uh, so we do need to get those bad guys back as well. But the question is, do I send this fleet forward so that this radar dome covers Cumdag? It looks like they're right here. Honestly, I'm very tempted to launch a nuke anyway and just hopefully catch them. If I aim for about here, um, I should do the trig. Someone did mention I should do the trig. So they're at speed 90. Um, so uh, they will move 90 kilometers in an hour. So if they are currently here, if we just extrapolate out down the middle of this, uh, where's my line so if i come out the middle of this they are off around about here so in one hour they will be here if they continue on their bearing and then in another hour they will be here 
they'll be in Comdag essentially if they're going to land in Comdag. Now, if I check the speed of my missiles, so we do a missile. I'm going to try and do a missile intercept here, and we're going to, re we're going to return to base. I think. Um, if I check here, the missile's top speed. Oh, I can't check it in here, can I? Oh, that's a shame. I can't remember the speed of the missile off the top of my head, and I don't want to go and check it, because I want to do everything in-game. But we should have planes back up and running. So my interpretation is if I aim a missile around about here, it should get a lock on the fleet, and that's what we're going to do. So we're gonna, it's, oh, she should be far away from the city, so I'm not going to kill people in the city, because I want to land and come back. So if I aim for around about here, now it's a shame I don't have a KH-15P loaded because that will home it in on the radar jammer from miles away. Um, KH-15Ps are great for getting people with, well, P missiles are great for intercepting radars. But I think that's approximately where I want to launch this missile. It should catch them because if they're currently here, they will have flown along to he around about here-ish by the time the missile arrives. And if I get it to activate around about here, it should pick them up in its radar cone. Uh, the radar cone's not that long. We'll do it about here and we're going to launch. What we're then going to do is get this fleet to RTB um, because they, I need to, I, they don't have the fuel to stay in the combat zone. I'm going to turn off our radar. I want to see how that goes. So missile is away. I'm also just going to jump back in and I'm going to rearm the uh, Sevastopol with a nuke. And the Sevastopol is going to be permanently armed with nukes, but this will be renamed rearmed with conventional missiles if this doesn't work. Um, so KH, that's a normal KH-15. I want a KH-15N. I think I actually may have loaded a, a standard KH-15 here. I did. Oh, in that case, oops. Let's not do that. Let's undo that. Uh, we're just going to do button. Undo, undo. Okay, we're just going to load, launch a conventional KH-15 here. So the, the Sevastopol is going to be reloaded with conventional missiles, just so that I don't accidentally nuke somebody. Um, let's back out. And let's see if this nuke strike works. So we did the trig trigonometry. Um, we worked out the direction they were traveling in, the angle that they're traveling in, and my anticipations are going to be somewhere around here when this missile gets here. The missiles have speed 900. Let's make a note of that so I don't forget it again. Speed 900. So they can travel um, 900 kilometers in one hour. So I'm, that, that's more very important pit to note for the maths that I'm trying to do. Um, the, A, the A100 missiles are much, much faster. Um, but let's see what happens. The missile's going to get into its radar speed soon. And I really want to nuke this fleet, because if I take out these two Variags, it's going to just make my life so much easier. 5.4 hours until the uh, Zero Sum is ready to go. Okay, they're being jammed, which of course reduces their radar profile. I forgot about that. They're no longer being jammed, and they didn't get a lock. So we missed with that missile. So that's going to hit in the desert and just explode harmlessly. Now that leads me to believe that they are somewhere... Um, coming towards us. Do we have any planes ready to go yet? Not ready. As soon as those planes are ready, we're going to send out some scouting missions. This is why I need to act on um, information better. Also, KH-15 missiles are very slow. Uh, what I'm going to do while we're waiting is I'm going to, as soon as it arrives, I'm going to refuel my Skylark and send it to pick these guys up. As soon as they've landed, the Skylark doesn't need to sit and repair. I do need to rename the Skylark, however, because someone gave me a name for it, and I like the name a lot. So this poor Skylark here is going to get renamed Black Eye. We need, we really need more tankers. Um, once we get out of this difficulty, I'm probably going to refit some ships to be tankers. So the Black Eye is going to fill up with 100% fuel, and it's going to fly up to Rafat. Now, is that enough fuel to actually save them? I don't think so. So it's going to fly to Cert. Uh, did I, I did that wrong. It's going to fly to Cert, the Black Eye. Um, it doesn't need that much fuel. It's flying to Cert, and it's going to refuel at Cert. And it's going to get there really fast. Now, what we're waiting on right now is planes. Um, and we're going to maybe just do a couple of radar sweeps. Uh, so you can see they've turned their jamming off again. Um, because they're not danger close anymore. The distance, they're distance five. And we're just waiting for planes to come online. We've got 1.5 hours left on repairs, which means all my rockets will be ready. So I've got KH-15, um, con two conventional missiles, one nuclear missile, one um, emission-seeking missile. Planes were just waiting to come online. Let's just fast forward a little bit. So repairs are done here. That means the zero sum is almost ready to go. 0 0.7 hours left on that. We still don't have planes ready. They're still at uh, distance one. So I think they've landed in come dog at this point. They're probably repairing, which makes things difficult for us. Uh, let's just get rid of all of this tracking that I've done. We don't need that here anymore. Because what we'll do is we'll buzz come dag with planes and see if that's where they are. Uh, and if it is, we'll send out another bombing strike and then we'll nuke on the back of the bombing strike if they're still alive. We'll probably just fire off two KH-15 conventional missiles. Um, I'm quite happy to use a lot of strategic resources to take out these two Variags. They are so important to kill. But we should pay attention to this up here. 
Um, we'll wait for this guy to arrive here. How are we doing on planes? Planes are still not ready. I say it over and over again. I really wish we had a timer on how long these had left to repair and rearm. Um, I don't have any more planes in supply, do I? Just, I'm not missing out because I did lose a plane on that attack run. Uh, I don't think I have any planes to add. No, I don't. Okay, cool. Uh, let's back out of here. Okay, he is landing here. As soon as he's down, we need to refuel. Wait, did I take the rooster with him? I didn't mean to. I must have clicked on it. That's frustrating. Yep, I took the rooster with me. Uh, anything to buy here while we're here? Nope. Okay, let's quickly refuel these guys. Supplies. Get enough fuel to... Where are they? Where they're, they're fat, aren't they? So probably about this much fuel. There's also already fuel in the town for them to pick up. It's one of the reasons I sent them there. So we'll get them to refuel. Um, all right. Planes ready yet? Nope, planes are not ready yet. The zero sum is now ready, which is great. I'll remember, next thing we're going to do is look for a hidden city around about here once we've taken care of these guys. They're still at Kamdag, from what I can understand. They're probably doing repairs, which I don't want them to do too, for too long. Uh, these guys are refueling. So I'm going to get them to fly over to Rafat. From Rafat, they're going to fly down to Sadie and buy another Lightning, and then they're going to relink with my fleet at the City of the Hidden People, um, which means we'll get that Yars added into the fleet. That's another conventional missile carrier. And um, our main objective right now is just taking care of this strike fleet. Um, so I'm just kind of going to sit here and fast forward into my planes. Oh, we've got a radio signal. So that's on the standard band. This will probably be Varyag reporting that they've lost us because we're about to run out of silent strike alarm. Which way was this? Back this way, okay. I'm running out of time. Come on. Come on. And we need a direction. It's over here. Alright, so we've got an encrypted message here. Let's go through decryption. The game is paused right now. If I open the cipher key up, I have these cipher pieces. If I put them together on my cipher board, I get a cipher um, code that I can use. So I've got 21, 34, 29, 19. Let me just write that down so I'm not having to go in and out of this. So 21, 34, 29, 19. Now I can close that down and go to my, my code wheels here and enter those numbers here. So the first number is 21. And you can see how the letters in the, in the message are changing. Next one's 34. Next one is 29. And the last one is 11. And now, oh, I don't think it is 11. I think I've written it down wrong. What is it? What is the last number? 19, not 11. I can't read my own writing. And now you can see that I've got the message, Aquamarine is somewhere, course South Southwest main cargo electrical equipment frigate. So um, there is a trade fleet in this direction. So there's a trade fleet somewhere around here. So trade fleet somewhere up in this direction. So now we can start reading enemy messages until they change their encryption again. Um, still not ready on the aircraft, which is frustrating unless it doesn't refresh when you close it. No, these guys have almost finished refueling. So that's our next mission. I might actually take Rafat. I might take Rafat with the rooster because I know there's nothing left there because um, we, we hit it with those rockets and then I'll send the fleet itself down to Sadie. Um, I might actually, I think I'm going to do that because then I can use the intel here to, to determine the location of the strike fleet. Back over here, we're still getting them on the 330 bearing. Um, I'm really hoping that they are not um, coming in our direction across the desert really slowly because if they attack us in the city of the hidden people, we are screwed. Okay, we've got aircraft ready. Um, I think I'm going to send out my aircraft on an adventure to determine their location. Two planes. I've got to remember they've probably reloaded their missiles, so I need to get ready to evacuate if they get hit. But let's see what we've got going on over here. And then very soon after that, we should be getting the subsonic planes ready. I also need to keep these guys... Um, after this bombing mission, I need to keep one on the airstrip at all times with anti-air missiles ready to go in case I have a nuke incoming. It's my best bet for shooting those nukes down. All ships in vicinity, unknown contact, bearing 140 Elbrus. Now, where did that come from? Oh, Elbrus is these guys. So they've just made uh, 140. What's the bearing of 140? Yeah, okay, they've picked up my planes. They know my planes are incoming. If they're in Kamdag, if I'm right, then they've picked up. Let's have a look. So I think they're in Kamdag. What's the uh, visual range of my planes? I can't see it right now. Okay, we found them. One is in Elbrus, one is heading south. Let's get the one that's, that's actually left. Um, I think that's the one I want to get. So what I can do right now is I'm going to launch... Uh, while they're on the ground... I'm going to launch a, hmm, 
a radar seeking missile at about I want to get the one that's in here, but they might fly towards my planes. So I'm gonna launch it about it has a ring, which is good about this this type of this type of rocket. Uh, I'm gonna launch it about here. And we'll hit this fleet. Now I'm gonna to need to retreat if they launch a missile. Well done. For, oh, he did. He was off the. Come on, he was off the screen. Okay, that's two missiles. That's another K7 gone, which is unfortunate. Here comes the second one again. Ready to retreat if they launch missiles. Looks like they're out of ammo. They only had one missile each. Maybe don't attack the Varyag because it's going to take a lot of hits to take out if you do that way. Okay, so one T7 got away, and we've got an approximate location of these 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 fleets. All right, so let's keep the game paused. These guys are still in base. This fleet here is moving at speed 70. So let's just, if we take its approximate route, 70 kilometers is one hour, two hour, three hour, well, that's a little bit too much. Three hours, four hours, I'm a bit off. I know this isn't exact. Five hours. Okay, if they can keep heading in that direction, that's where they're going to end up. Um, we have our LA-29s available. So let's load them up with the Sayedi Special. I'm going to send them out in twos um, to intercept this fleet. That's all of them in the air. Um, now I want to keep these guys. These guys still have a lot of fuel. So I actually want to keep them just in the area to keep an eye on these fleets for me and act as, um, as, a, as a scan. Okay, uh, what is my next job here? Do I want to launch another missile strike? Keep clicking on that. I think I want to try and strike the fleet that are in the on the ground. Now, are they taking off is the question. Speed 89, they have taken off. So let's find out where they're heading. Uh, we've still got tons of fuel left here. Let's just confirm how much the range is from here to here. So it's 1,000 kilometers. So they've got, they can, they can loiter for a while and just give me intel. So they are also heading south, okay? So their speed is, their, their speed is picking up. They're much faster. Looks like speed 95 is their top speed. Um, so let's think about them. So if they're going at speed 95 and my missile has a speed of 900 and the distance is 1,000 kilometers, it's going to take about an hour and a bit for my plane, my missiles to reach this area. Is that correct? So if I draw a line from here, oh God, who did I just send out? Who's this? This is my entire fleet. Uh, get back into base. Did not realize I'd sent you out. Let's just uh, delete some of this stuff. I'm going to get that back. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to delete. Is this a line I drew? Yeah. Let's just get this back in the city, the hidden people, please. I turn around, cool. So let me just think, because I need to do this correctly. So if I launch my missiles, in an hour, this fleet's going to be about here, and this fleet's going to be about here. So if I launch, I want to go with conventional missiles to start with. So I, don't want, to, I want to make sure I've got my maths right. So if I launch a, miss, a missile roughly around here, and a missile roughly around here, just a bracket, we should be able to hit one of these fleets. Second missile away, cool, second missile away. And then I'll land and reload the missiles in these fleets. How are things going over here, right? This is this is connected up. I am going to send the rooster to attack Rafat with the whole fleet. Yeah, I think I'm gonna attack with the whole fleet because we don't have a lot of fuel here. We actually have to take Rafat. So let's just attack Rafat. Um, but I'm gonna send, I called it the back eye rather than the black eye. I'm gonna send the rooster ahead on its own just in case the same thing happens again. All right, let's have a look at how things are going here. I need you, still got some range and speed. Reacquire these targets for me. Okay, targets are good. These planes are taking their time to get across. I think my missiles are gonna miss. My first nuke is definitely gonna miss, unfortunately. Okay, he's gonna have to head home very soon. But I think I'm good with my estimations on where they're going to be, because I estimated that they would be there in an hour, and they're just slightly ahead of it. So my trig's not too bad, but I think my missiles are going to miss, just because um, I'm firing them at quite long ranges. Let's send this guy back. Oh, look, 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 look. They're turning to chase. They've detected the missiles incoming. I'm pretty sure. Interesting. 
They're trying to dodge the missiles. Um, let's see how that plays out for them. They may have dodged my conventionals. Oh, now that the city has, this fleet has landed as well, let's get them reloading with missiles. Ship works. We're going to put on the Great Evil King. Uh, he actually still has a nuke. We're going to arm him with a... Do I have any conventional peas? Yeah, I do. We're going to put a P on him. Conventional. And then the Sevastopol. We're going to load with a two conventionals. I may have pulled the trigger on the nukes a bit early. All right, and let's just back out of here. Did I save that? 1.8 hours. I don't think I saved that. I did save that. Okay, cool. I wasn't sure if I hit escape or pushed escape, which is a big difference. Okay, first missile is coming in. Oh. Okay, the rooster's coming in. Badly damaged paladin and a courageous. That's fine. Let's get through this fight really quickly. Um, I'm using conventional ammo. He's on, he's coming up here. Oh, last shot hit him. I see the paladin over on the left hand side of the screen. If you notice, the paladin now has uh, everybody has really powerful ammo these days. He's going to fire standard ammo here. You get a warning of what ammo they're going to fire based on the color of their targeting line. And he, I knew he was really badly injured, so that didn't take too long. Okay, so that's Rafat taken, which is good. Because we lost a lot of stuff at Rafat earlier. Um, we need money. We don't, we're not too worried about fuel. We've got survivors here, which is a problem. We've got a 2A37. We've got that gun, which I'd really like. Another 2A37. Um, if I'm getting that gun, I don't need crew protection. I do need crew protection for the survivors. I have got enough time to... Secure the fuel tanks, grab the gun, and then try and get the survivors if I can. But I don't want the fuel tanks to explode before I've got a chance to get the gun. Okay, let's go back to what's going on over here. Because we've got... Oh, okay, missile intercept. We've got a missile intercept. A nuke intercept on... Ah. Even with the nuke being exploded, it still dealt damage to this fleet. We'll see how much damage that was in a second. Let's go back over. Where are we? Okay, hang on. Pause the game. These planes are going to overshoot, so I want you all to attack this fleet. Let's take this fleet out first. Uh, how are our missiles looking? These missiles are going to miss, just looking at the way they're flying. Looks like they're going to let's get ready to retreat as well if they've got more missiles. Even one of these Vargas would be a huge victory for me. This is the fleet that took the nuke damage, so I want to focus on them right now. Um, they're fleeing across. Let's just quickly take a note of their trajectories. That's really interesting. I've never seen the AI turn like that away from missiles. This missile may actually hit. It may just manage to hit. Um, just in case it does, I'm actually going to order these planes to strike this fleet rather than... Oh, God. Why? 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 Fly out of here. No. Actually, can I get you to lead this missile? No. Get this missile. I've never seen a missile lock onto a plane before either. Okay, I'm going to have to try and get this plane to lead this missile towards this ship. <laughs> Which is going to be fun. Okay, so I need you to fly here. Oh, everything's happening. Fire eggs have so much armor. I don't know if fire damage continues out of the combat game in the game. I don't know if the fire damage will occur out on the main map. Right. Get into this missile. The missile's faster than him. He's not going to make it. Okay. So, I that missile was going to hit. And, I, okay, actually, get out of here. Cool. You're going to hit this fleet. Actually, no, you can just come in and finish this fleet off after this missile hits. We'll see what's left over. That was my fault. Oh, wow. Was that the fuel damage? I think that was the fuel damage. That missile didn't make it. Okay. Then you hit this fleet here. I messed that missile up. <laughs> so much fun when missile intercepts. Why is that fading out? Oh, because they've already fired their missiles. Okay, that's fine. Right. Okay. Um, let's get some more missiles in the air now that we've got a good angle for them. Um, so do we have reload? Yeah, we've got a nuke reloaded. We've got a conventional missile reloaded. Let's launch another nuke. Um, now that we've got their approximate, I'm going to launch it for about here. So let's just check. Uh, 
the missile travels at 1,000, it travels at 900 kilometers per hour. So in one hour, it will be here. Uh, so it's gonna take an hour and a half, roughly. Yeah. So why don't we where they are an hour and a, in an hour and a half? So let's just in an hour and a half, this fleet traveling at speed 114. In one hour, it will be here. In an hour and a half, so half of 114 is around about 57. So it needs to be around 160-ish. Maybe we'll do 170. They're going to be around about here. And this fleet traveling at 114. If I go forward to about 170. Huh, how weird that I clicked where they're roughly going to be. So if I launch a missile about here. And then we launch a nuke around about... Where did I launch that missile? Oh, it hasn't launched yet. I was like, where the hell did that missile go? Launch the nuke around about here. Why did it de-click? Because it's launched. It just hasn't made the noise yet. Okay, and we'll get those ships back. Now, um, let's get the two that I've just fired reloading. So where did I fire those from? Uh, one from the Sevastopol was my my conventional missile. Let's load a KH-50PN on that there. And the other one will be from the Great Evil King. Uh, okay, I clicked on the wrong ship. The Great Evil King uh, has both of its missiles still, because the second missile hasn't actually technically fired yet. Back up here at Rafat, we have a survival. What are they rescuing? Because I didn't actually, I uh, hate the way it zooms in on those mini games. We've got a radio signal to pick up as well, which I'll do in a second. So it's doing crew protection. I really want this gun. Uh, can, oh, I'm not gonna get this, let's auto. Cool, that's just a trade plane. I'm not too worried about that right now. I know there's a big mess going on up here, but let's see how this goes. Let's just delete all of this. This is quite a long battle now. Um, this has been going on for a while. We need to wait for our planes to come up and running. So I can no longer use my remaining T7 for um, strikes because I need to make sure that it doesn't get killed. Um, it needs to be there to intercept missiles. Okay, we got the risk. We got them. I think we got the gun because the ammunition's still here. So now I want to get crew protection so we can try and search for survivors because I don't want any more morale lost on the rooster. Let's search for survivors, and I hope that this ammunition exploding doesn't kill the survivors. The rest of the fleet's just arrived. Ammunition's about to explode. It did not kill the survivors, so we can just search the crew cabins. Okay, missile strikes. If I got this right, we should pick the fleet up. We have not picked the fleet. Yes! I got the intercept right. They've still got so many anti-missile missiles, however, that my crew's... Oh, we got through! Yes! You didn't see it, but I fist pumped there. The Variac has been destroyed. One of the greatest threats to our fleet has just been knocked out. Let's see what, how the second missile goes. I don't think it's got a lock. It has got a lock. But it's locked onto the wrong fleet. Oh, you're so dead. No chance. Goodbye. I think he survived that. You could have strike. Okay. So now we only have one Varyag fleet left. And I found a gold elephant. Okay. So. Um, Basalt is gone. As far as I'm aware. So Elbrus is gone. We only have Basalt left. Now Basalt is currently around about here. It's going to be a while before our planes haven't even... Well, we're looking at the wrong fleet. We need to investigate it, but we, we don't have anything fast enough to get over there and see. What I could do is send um, the Sevastopol. In fact, I could just fly the fleet north and try and find them. Why don't we do that? I'm feeling... I mean, the top speed we've got here is 175. It's going to take us a long time to find them. But the radar range on the Sevastopol is... The radar range is 750 kilometers. So if I can get within 750 kilometers of where I believe them to be, which will be, so let's have a look. 750 kilometers from here, which is where I think they are right now, is... Here, okay? Now, if they're traveling at speed 98 now, um, when I last saw them, and I believe they are here, um, and it's going to take my fleet at speed 175. So if I send them like here, it's going to take 500. So 500 kilometers, that's 175, 350. It's going to take them about three and a half hours to get to there. Um, so in three and a half hours, they are going to be from here. So 98, so but roughly 300 kilometers. 
If they're continuing in this direction, they're going to be about here. A 750 degree bubble from here, 750 kilometer bubble from here is about there. So if I send my fleet to here, um, I will be able to pick them up if they're in Kumdag. I'll be able to pick them up if they're in Bochim, and I should be able to pick them up if they're in the air. The fleet doesn't need to do anything on the ground right now. Let's do it. So I'm going to order the fleet to here. It's going to take them four hours to get there, which is I thought it would be uh, not that long. But let's see how we look. And I'm actually going to land them probably in Kumdag. We've got tons of fuel. So let's send them up. Meanwhile, in Rafat, let's find out what's going on here. Knowing my luck, we'll probably have an event. Uh, we don't need to land anyone, which is unreal. Also, we have our we managed to recover a Skylark, which is such a boon. I'm going to send the I'm going to send the Bakai and the Yars back to my main fleet, and the Rooster and the Skylark are going to continue. We we have a event. Um, all right, uh, let's end this video here. And then we'll start the next video with this event just for something to do. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it's still exciting. And uh, we will get this campaign back in action. And we killed Ivariag. Catch you in the next video.